business process management SOA. Um, at its simplest level, business process management is about separating your channels from your processes, from your service bus, from your supplying applications. But so you get a quick break from my voice. We have a tiny bit of issue with the sound here, so we're going to do a slightly old-fashioned way of doing it because we can't get the sound to work here. I have a video and I'm going to point the, mark, the, the microphone here at it, so it's a little bit quiet. Um, it's only 30 seconds, but it's, it's, um, it's a video I usually use to explain SOA to very senior business executives and people at board level. Okay? IT people sort of grimace because it's a little bit simplistic, um, but it's a nice 30-second uh, analogy that explains it to non-technology people. Okay, let's get the sound working as best I can. Innovation is defined as the process of making change in order to do something new. Service-oriented architecture makes change easier. Traditionally, building your IT meant piecing together a collection of hardware, software, and networking. These components were rigidly integrated, so playing a new tune was difficult. With service-oriented architecture, your IT is built with modularly assembled and easily reconfigurable components, like musical notes. Think of each musical note not as a piece of software or hardware, but as a service your business performs, like checking someone's credit, checking your inventory, or tracking a shipment. Because SOA composes your IT like musical notes, you can flexibly assemble your services to create a tune just right for the market. When the market wants to hear something different, instead of starting from scratch, you can just take the same notes and reconfigure them to make something different, saving you time and money. You can also add new notes, even combine them with another group of notes to give your IT more muscle to do something new to help your business grow. Service-oriented architecture gives you the flexibility to change easily. This ability to change is what enables your business to innovate. That worked better than I thought it would. That's good. Step back again. <coughs> Excuse me, just drink of water. Um, okay, so it's a little bit simplistic. <laughs> okay, certainly from IT perspective, people sort of grip us go, oh, what? Uh, and I do always follow it by actually making that explanation to the exec, saying, look, this makes it look the end game, end game, but getting there is, is the difficulty. Okay, um, so if that is um, business, uh, if that is um, uh, analogy for SOA of notes, then business process management can be considered the pianola, if you like. So you've broken your IT now into all of these notes, update shipment, you know, update customer address details, you know, perform credit check, update inventory, all of these services. That's no use unless something can put them together to deliver an actual business outcome. You can actually string all of those services together to deliver a true business process or a true out outcome for the customer or internally. The thing that strings all of those services together is business process management. Okay, it's a process layer that sits on top that just and the analogy we use is, is pianola. You know, you've got all these notes, and then for the technical people, BPMN, or Business Process Modeling Notation, or BPEL, Business Process Execution Language, is the sheet feeder that feeds into the Business Process Management tool, the BPN, to actually play these notes. I often get asked the very simple question of, how do you manage to get executives to put money on the table for SOA? Because we, we, we usually do. We don't, you know, very, very infrequently have not got the, the business people to put money on the table, and it's usually an issue in IT organizations. And so I've been asking, how do you sell SOA to the business? Never. You sell in business process management, and by the way, it sells itself. Okay, you never sell SOA. It means nothing to them. It's an IT thing. Okay, but if you, they all want business process management. Business process management gives a real-time visibility to the processes executing in their organization. Automatic alerting of SLAs that are not being met. So you imagine this was a, a, a processing of a loan mortgage application. It would tell them straight away, actually, We've got an SLA of four hours. We've taken an hour and a half. Typically, on an average mortgage, that it takes four hours for the rest of this complete. You better do something right now, or this SLA will not be met. And so it gives them proactive warning, real-time analytics as things are flowing through, real-time fraud check. Okay, so there's some very, very sophisticated things you can do with these tools, value add to the business. And again, as you can probably tell, I could talk for an hour about process management and what it could do. Um, okay, but so I can explain the last piece later on. 
there are a couple of very, very critical design decisions here, very important ones, okay? What, and it's actually jokingly referred to on the internet as the billion dollar question in SOA, okay? What is the right granularity for my services? Okay, that is the number one design issue, or in engineering terms, what is the right granularity to break apart those components? What are the right black boxes for me to break apart my organization into? Now, we kind of instinctively know, if I stay within the banking scenario, now I will try and throw some other, other uh, industry segments in in a minute, um, we would kind of instinctively, instinctively know in IT that process loan mortgage application is too, is too coarse-grained. It's a whole process. It's not a service. You're not going to get any reuse out of something like process loan mortgage application. It's a process. Okay, we kind of know that. That's right. At the other end of the extreme, you might have update customer's first name, update customer's second name, update customer's postcode. We kind of instinctively know that's wrong. But where between those two extremes of extremely coarse-grained and extremely fine-grained is the right answer for the service is a non-trivial problem. Like it's quite a complex design issue. Okay? And most organizations in our experience are largely doing it through some form of art form or some sort of skewer design without having any engineering a rigorous approach to being able to identify what is the right granularity for my services. Okay. The other way you'll hear the word it is, where is the right boundary between the process layer, whoops, it's the same, it's actually exactly the same question but asked in a slightly different way. What is the right boundary between my process layer and my service layer? Where, do, where does processes finish and services begin? That's just another twist on the same thing, what's the right granularity for my services? Okay, so you'll see this problem addressed in numerous ways, but it all boils down to the same thing. What is the right granularity to break apart my enterprise into? And when you say people who are trying a, a, a SOA and you hear people saying, oh, we're not getting much reuse. Now, by the way, SOA is not just about reuse. SOA is about agility. SOA is about enabling BPM. SOA, reuse, which everybody seems to be obsessed with, is your free set of steak knives. Okay, that's a bonus feature of SOA. Okay, agility is what you really are looking for and the ability to be able to change rapidly. That's where the business will get excited. They won't get excited over a slight reduction in IT costs. They want real agility. Okay. <coughs> and you won't get reuse if you haven't got granularity right. And I'll give you a real life case study about that um, very shortly if I get there. Okay. So we talked about this idea of a business capability model, okay? This is how you actually solve the service granularity problem. But I want to talk about a capability model first to explain what it is.